Hey everyone, this is Nick and it's been three years since I took a look at alternative search engines, alternatives to Google. And new ones have popped up since then, existing ones have gotten better or have not improved at all. And so yeah, I used Startpage for a while and then I moved back to DuckDuckGo. But this one has been letting me down lately, so I think it's time I find a new home for my web searches. So let's take a look at some search engines, see how private they are, how efficient they are, and see what I landed on. And of course, my final choice isn't going to be the right one for everyone. So don't hesitate to let me know in the comments which search engine you use. And if it's not something I covered in the video or that I tried, maybe I'll give it a shot. Now you should definitely give today's sponsor a shot because they're gonna give you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux or gaming server running. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Pi-hole. PyHole is a DNS sinkhole that filters out requests to ad serving domains. Basically, it lets you block ads and improve network performance. It lets you actively monitor every DNS request made on your network and block requests as they come in. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode so you can ensure I stay poor. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. So let's start with DuckDuckGo and see why I decided it wasn't working for me. It's because the name is dumb. Okay, okay, no, sorry, that's not the reason. I'm shallow, but I'm not Instagram influencer shallow. Generally, DuckDuckGo is good. It's fast, it has pretty nice image search tools, which I use very, very often for illustrating videos. And it's very, very configurable with tons of options to make it look or work like you want it to. Now it has ads provided by Bing and this does lead to some amount of tracking when you click an ad, but you can disable them in the settings. Now DuckDuckGo had a few controversies lately though. First, the whole Microsoft tracker kerfuffle. DuckDuckGo billing itself as a private search engine was expected to not track anyone and they even have a tracker blocker extension and web browser for mobile devices. And since a few months for macOS. Problem is, while these tools were supposed to block trackers, they didn't block Microsoft trackers. Because DuckDuckGo has a search agreement with Microsoft to provide results. And nowhere was that fact disclosed. So people expected to be safe and private, but they weren't entirely. They since fixed that, but communication wasn't great and they should have been transparent about that instead of waiting for people to discover it. Now, DuckDuckGo was also accused of censorship as they deranged some Russian propaganda websites, but that's not something I want to get into because, well, this is YouTube and comments are toxic enough. None of these issues are why I'm leaving DuckDuckGo though. What drove me away is the results quality. I search in two languages most days, in French and in English. And while the results in English are generally good, in French, they're pretty lackluster. And even in English, as soon as your query becomes technical or even Linux oriented, I tend to not really find what I want. I have to go to the second page, open a few websites, realize that's not helpful, go back, try another query. And that's where you tell me that the banks feature is awesome. And I agree, just typing exclamation point G or exclamation point SP changes the search to a Google or start page search. And they have a ton more to specifically look up things on specific websites. The issue is I want my search engine to give me good results on the first try. Not having to parse two pages, realize there's nothing that works for me and then change my query to search on another search engine. And I would estimate that I need to use bangs in about half my queries, which is just not good. Not that banging is something I don't enjoy, but when time is of the essence, I would like to actually bang less. Sorry about that. Now, seriously, if you use your search engine half the time to open another search engine, you might as well switch to that other search engine, right? So yeah, DuckDuckGo's results are just not working for me. In your country, it might be different. It might give you exactly what you need, 
but for me, it just wasn't good enough. So, as I'm a fan of the Slash E Android ROM, which is super private and de-googled, I decided to give a shot to the search engine called eSpot. It's a fork of Cirx. Cirx? 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 Search? How are you supposed to pronounce that? I'd say Cirx. So, Cirx is a meta engine which aggregates results from a lot of other search engines, and you can configure which engines you want to use. The E Foundation is a non-profit I trust, I liked what they're doing, and the concept was appealing, so their fork of Cirx seemed like a good idea. Unfortunately, it fell flat. While the results are actually pretty good and private, as they don't log anything or pass anything other than your query to all the search engines they aggregate, it is super slow. And I know it's ridiculous to complain about a search taking a few seconds to load, it, it's a first world problem. But when you're used to lightning fast queries, like with most search engines, the delay feels really bad. Second, eSpot doesn't have any image-based search tools. I can't search for transparent images, or the license type they use, or the size, and that makes it completely unusable for my needs. I do need all these tools to be able to illustrate my videos, grab the images that I have the right to use, and that I can actually manipulate and use in my thumbnails or in my videos. So, eSpot is a bust, but what about Cirx itself? After all, the default instance is private, the results can be tailored, and it's much faster than eSpot. You can also set up your own instance if you want to be fully in control and not depend on someone else's servers, which is really cool. But it also lacks the most basic image search tools, so same problem here, it just doesn't work for me. If you don't search for images often though, or you don't need advanced search tools, it's a good alternative and it has tons of configuration options to really tailor the searches to what you want. Still, for me, none of these two work. I don't want to have to switch to another search engine every time I'm looking for an image. Next is Yandex. Mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. Okay, another one I used for a while is Brave Search. Now, Brave isn't a company I'm too fond of. Their browser is good, but all the crypto stuff, even though it's optional, it kind of turns me off. A company that's so invested in crypto is kind of suspicious to me, and of course that's just my opinion, and yours can be totally different, but that is definitely a drawback for me. The search engine, though, is really good. It's fast enough where I live, the results are good in French and English, at least for the queries I make, and it's got all the image-based search tools I use every day. They also use their own index, which I like, and while they supplement that with external results, if they are not sure that they have what you need, they will tell you in the sidebar how much comes from their index and how much doesn't. These other results come from Google and Bing, but they're anonymous and they can't be used to create a profile of you. They do collect usage metrics, but they're only used to have a vague picture of how many people use Brave Search, and you can turn that off in the settings if you're not comfortable with that either. All in all, Brave Search feels great to use. They have rich snippets, they outline conversations and online discussions about your query, and they also have banks that lets you switch to another search engine, which is nice because it's a great feature. I just don't want to need that feature but I like using it when I actually want to. With DuckDuckGo, I needed to use Banks to get a, an acceptable search result. But with Brave, I found that I only ever used it when I wanted to filter specifically to a specific website. I never needed to use Banks to get good results. So yeah, Brave Search as an engine is really good, but I don't really like the company. It's not a deal breaker, but it's still an issue. Next, I looked at Ecosia. Now, Ecosia is financed by ads, like most other search engines, and that ad income is used to plant trees, which is a very laudable goal. Ecosia uses Bing search results, which are honestly good enough these days. No complaints from me on that end. I could find everything I wanted using that. It's fast enough, it has all the image search tools that I need, and it's private. They anonymize all search queries, they don't sell any data, and they encrypt searches and they follow the do not track preference of your browser. So if that's turned on, they don't collect any data, and if that's off, they do have some usage statistics. Now, I saw online that they had a Bing personal tracking ID attributed to every user, and that you could turn it off in the settings. 
But for me, it was already turned off, so maybe they implemented do not track support for that preference as well. Ecosia also offers a bunch of search tags, which work like DuckDuckGo's bangs, except you're using the hashtag symbol instead of an exclamation point. As always, it's nice to have, but I never needed them when using Ecosia, because the results are really good. And I know, Bing is kind of a meme at that point, but honestly, it's gotten to the point where the results are virtually indistinguishable from Google's, at least for what I search and in the languages that I search in. So yeah, in the end, Ecosia has really, really good search results. Now the company itself feels sound. It's a non-profit. They only make money if you click on ads. Their servers use 100% renewable energy and they have their own solar plant. Of course, Bing servers might not be entirely carbon neutral, so maybe it's all for nothing. But I do appreciate the effort that's consistent with the mission. Also important to note, Ecosia servers are all around the world which means they are not subject to the US Patriot Act if the closest server to you isn't a US-based one. So the US government cannot pill for your data at will, even if you're not a US citizen. So in the end, I quite like Ecosia. I like the mission, the results are good, it has the tools I need, and it's private. It's a good contender. And then we have Startpage, a search engine I already used quite a lot in the past and that I like. It uses Google for its search results, but they completely anonymize all search queries. So you get basically the best results available, but Google doesn't know anything about you. Their image-based search tools are a bit limited, not letting you search by license, for example, but they do offer really great privacy. They never record personal data, they remove the IP addresses on their servers, they block price trackers, they prevent retargeting ads, and their search is completely unprofiled, so you're not living in a filter bubble. Although this means that you also might get confronted with opinions that aren't exactly the same as yours. Outrageous, I know. Startpage also has a VPN-like anonymous view, accessible directly from the engine, and it completely blurs all JavaScript tracking, it blocks all cookies, it changes your IP address, basically it makes you untrackable, completely untrackable if you want it. Now the search engine itself is a bit slower than other alternatives because it has to pass through Startpage's servers to anonymize the query, then Google servers to get the results, then back to Startpage's servers to display them, and then to your computer. So yeah, it takes a little bit longer than what you might be used to, but it's not slow per se, it's just a bit slower. The only potential concern I could find is that they're now owned by Privacy One Group Limited, which itself is owned by System One, which is an ad company. There are no signs of any violation of the privacy policy Startpage has, and there have been no reports of any weird behavior, but there's still that hanging suspicion. Now, for full disclosure, Startpage used to be a sponsor of the channel. Nowadays, they're not, but not because they did something wrong or because we didn't see eye to eye, it's just because they only wanted to sponsor privacy-related videos, and I just didn't make that many of them, and they were already taken by other sponsors. I just thought I had to let you know. Now, there are other options that I won't spend much time on. There's Search Encrypt, but it seems like it's basically a Chinese data collection tool nowadays. There's Swiss Cow, but they do censor some results to be family friendly. And there's Mojik, but the results don't really seem good enough for my use. Okay, so what do we have here? DuckDuckGo search results aren't good enough for me. Cirques and eSpot are too slow and don't have image-based search tools. Start page, I have suspicions that the ad company might do something untowards in the future, which leaves us with two contenders, Brave Search and Ecosia. And the choice is basically between a company I don't like, but which has an independent index, or a company I like, but which bases its results on Bing. And I'll go with Ecosia. I like the mission, the results are perfect for my needs in French and English, they are private and it's a fast and nice looking tool. In the end, what I need is a tool. It's a tool that returns good results and lets me work in peace. I pay attention to the environment as much as I can, but that's not my main decision factor when I select a tool. If Ecosia sucked but was super green, I wouldn't use it. Index independence is also important and Brave Search has that. But if that index is developed and used by a company I don't really trust, then the fact that it's independent kinda doesn't matter. So I'm moving to Ecosia on all my devices and I will absolutely update you if anything comes up or if this changes in the future.
And of course, your mileage may vary. Some of these engines might work better for you than they did for me. And if you have a recommendation, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. I will gladly try it if it's not already covered in this video. What is covered in this video though is today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, but they ship worldwide their devices that run Linux out of the box. They have laptops and desktops at all price points for all needs, from the smallest Nux and Ultrabooks to the biggest gaming laptops, workstations, gaming desktops, you name it. They have everything you might want and every device has a ton of configuration options available from CPU, GPU, RAM, SSD, secondary drives, you name it. You can even get your own logo engraved, laser etched on the lid of your laptop, which is like really, really nice. They have an enormous variety of keyboard layouts because they also laser etch the key symbol. So you can basically do whatever you want with that if you ask them to. And they ship Linux out of the box. As I said, they give you a selection of very popular Linux distros, but you can also be sure that you can install any other Linux distro because the hardware supports Linux out of the box. And if there are a few tweaks here and there, they have PPAs and repos you can add to basically make sure that everything is 100% perfect. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that it runs really well with Linux, just head over to the link in the description below, get yourself a Tuxedo laptop or desktop. I can only recommend them. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you're welcome to dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really like the channel and you want to help support what I do, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Or you can just do a one-time donation using the super thanks button or the PayPal link in the description. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!